a Japanese Game Boy competitor with 40 hours of battery life, and it only cost $35 in the late 90s? Well, that's the Bandai Wonderswan, and today we're going to take a look at one, do a repair on it, and give it an upgrade to a backlit LCD while we're at it. The Wonder Swan is a really interesting handheld game system that was released by Bandai in 1999. The initial release of the device was a monochrome version that came to market at a time when color handhelds were becoming commonplace. It's considered a sixth generation device, but it's probably best compared to the fourth and fifth generation devices like the Game Boy Pocket and the Neo Geo Pocket. Still, the price of the Wonderswan was nearly half that of the Game Boy Color, which at the time was a very popular handheld game system. Believe it or not, the Wonderswan was actually designed by the same person that designed Nintendo's Game Boy, Gunpei Yokoi. Yokoi left Nintendo in 1996 after creating the Virtual Boy and took several people with him to create his own company. Bandai then hired Yokoi's company to create the Wonderswan. Unfortunately, Gunpei Yokoi was tragically killed when struck by an automobile in 1997, while the Wonderswan was still in development. Although Yokoi never saw the device come to market, you can clearly see his influence in the design of the system. Most notably, the monochrome display, which contributes to the device's long 40-hour battery life, was a result of his philosophy of taking a mature and well-known technology and extracting all the value you can from it. However, only the first version of the Wonderswan was monochrome. There were two additional versions of the device released afterwards in 2000 and 2002, both with color displays. The Wonderswan color had a screen that could show up to 241 simultaneous colors, and the Swan Crystal used a TFT LCD display, which provided a better user experience over the color display in the Wonder Swan Color. Now, what I have here today is an original monochrome Wonder Swan. The monochrome LCD measures around 2.5 inches diagonally with a 244 by 144 pixel resolution and it's capable of displaying up to eight shades of gray. All three versions of the Wonderswan are powered by a custom chip made by Bandai, which was based on the popular NEC V30. The unit that I'm working on today does technically work, but there's two problems with it. First, there's no audio, so we'll pop it open and see if we can figure out what's causing that. And second, the screen, which you can sort of see if you hold it at the right angle, is in really bad shape. Not only will you notice the front polarizer is peeling up around the edges, but the picture is really dim and tough to see. Now, I could just do a polarizer replacement, which would be pretty simple, but I've really enjoyed putting aftermarket screens in my other devices, and so I want to do the same thing here. Everything else on the unit seems to be working okay. I did play a game for a few minutes and all the controls all function fine. For the replacement screen, I'm using an LCD display with a backlight, which I found on AliExpress. And it looks like a pretty straightforward replacement. I purchased this screen for around 50 US dollars. I've included the link in this video's description in case this is something that you wanna pick up and do on your own Wonderswan. But first, let's get this device apart. There are six T7 screws holding the shell together. The case then opens up to reveal the main board. And on the button pad here, it actually looks like there's some dried liquid. Looking closer at the board underneath and around the speaker, I'm noticing that there's a little bit of corrosion. So I'm guessing that something has been spilled on this side of the device. And now examining it a bit closer, 
I think I see a break in this trace right here, which is going to the red wire on the speaker. And my multimeter confirms it. Whatever spilled on this device ate away at that speaker trace. For the repair, I'm going to use a piece of enameled wire. I'll solder one end to this via, and the other end to the speaker pad. Okay, let's see if that corrected the problem. All right, now that sounds working, let's go ahead and replace the screen. But before I do that, I wanna take a power draw measurement so we can see how much the new screen impacts the battery life. So let's set the power supply to output 1.5 volts, attach the output wires to the battery terminal, and turn it on. And as you can see, we're getting somewhere around 30 to 40 milliamps of power draw. So that's our benchmark. The replacement screen arrived in this plastic case. Opening it up, we'll find a plastic screen cover, which I think I'm going to leave off, the new screen with a controller board attached, some adhesive, a ribbon cable, and a couple pieces of thin wire. We need to take the old LCD out, so I'm just going to use this plastic pry bar, and it comes right out. The existing adhesive seems to be intact, so I just decided to use that. I did clean it off with some IPA to restore its stickiness though and the new screen just drops into place. These two pads at the bottom of the screen's controller board need to be connected to the battery terminals. This will supply the 1.5 volts to power the display. So I tin the pads with some solder and attach the two wires that came with the kit. We'll solder these to the battery terminal shortly. Before we can attach the main board, we need to put the ribbon cable on and it needs to be bent in a particular way in order for it to fit correctly. Now, the instructions for the screen say to place something on the controller board to insulate it from the main board to prevent a short. So I just reused the plastic cover that came with the display as that insulator. Oh, and I also need to adhere this touch sensor to the inside of the case. We'll take a look at what this does in just a minute. Okay, well, that seems to be it. So let's put the main board on, attach the ribbon cable, solder the wires to the battery terminals, and close up the shell. All right, before we try out a game, let's turn it on and see what the power draw of this new screen is like. And it looks like we're getting 160 milliamps on the low end and over 220 when the brightness is all the way up. Whoa, that's substantially higher. Well, some quick math tells me that this screen will knock the Wonder Swan's battery life down to about 10 to 15 hours, depending on the brightness level you keep the screen at. Okay, but how good is it? Well, let's try it out by playing a game. The Wonder Swan has some really fun games, but they're all in Japanese. However, there are some that you can play without having to read anything, such as Klonoa Moonlight Museum. This game is a side-scrolling platformer with some puzzle-solving elements to it, and it's quite fun. The game looks really good, and you'll notice that there's essentially an eight shade color palette. When I touch the sensor at the top, the screen swaps out the gray color palette for different colors. And there's even one palette option here where it makes all eight shades a unique color. Now this in no way resembles the intended colors of the game. In fact, it's rather distracting.
All right, I also have this bass fishing game, which I don't really know how to play because it has a lot of Japanese text. However, it does demonstrate one of the coolest features of the Wonder Swan, its ability to be played in portrait mode. All right, well, this screen certainly seems like a step up from the factory LCD. And honestly, it makes me want to expand my Wonderswan game collection so I can have some more fun games to play on it. If you're interested in getting a Wonderswan, the original monochrome version like I have here is actually going for decent prices on eBay. At the time that I'm filming this, I'm seeing prices under the $40 range. Now, the games can be a bit pricey, especially if you're looking for some of the better ones to play. So keep in mind that you'll still need to invest a bit of money to build up your library. What's your favorite game for the Wonder Swan? Let me know in the comments below because, well, I need to expand my collection. So I'll pick up a few and maybe try them out in a future video. Okay, well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Bandai Wonder Swan and the repair and backlit screen upgrade that we did on this one. Thank you for watching. Hey, I'll see you next time. But until then, go mod something cool.